Okay, the Kutu Teda Chukas, page Sama Chalaf, second column. Okay, the Pasik said, You should take for yourself a red heifer that has no blemish, that never had a yoke on it. So the medrash, that's it to purify a dead person who came in contact with a dead body. Perish the medrash, the medrash says, Pada zu golus mitzrayim. Pada refers to golus of Egypt. Like it says, Agla yaf yafit the mitzrayim adum, mitzrayim. So by mitzrayim, he uses the word agla, kaf. Aduma, when it says Pada aduma, refers to golus bava, malchus bava, which is reisha de dahava which is the head of gold. Gold is reddish. Tamima is Malchus Modai. Tamima refers to Malchus Yod. So the Medrash elaborates that each word over here refers to a different Golos of the Yidin. So what do you mean you take these things for yourself? That you should take yourself out of the Golos Mitzrayim El Bachinus Mesha to the level of Mesha it says the Yikhu Elacha. What should they take to Mesha Abenu? Pada Mitzrayim, Adum Abavel, all the various Goliasin, a Jew should go out and bring them to Mesha Abenu, which is the level of Das of Hashem. Lahavan that to understand this what it means, says name Atik no Shayik no Pasha Padukedama Pesa. We need to understand. But we read Parshish Pada, you know, there's the four Parshish. So you have Chodesh and Zachar, and then Pada, and then you have uh, Chodesh. So it says in Halacha, the Gemara says, why do we read Pada Duma before? Because before you bring the Korban Pesach, everybody has to purify themselves. So in preparation for Pesach, it reads about the Pada Duma. So the question is, after Rabbi asked, there's a Gemara that says, A person, it's a brought down. A person has to purify himself before Yom Tif. Why? Because Yom Tif, they would go up to the base of Migdash, they would bring Korbanis. So the Rebbe is asking, the reason why we read Pada Adum before Pesach is to purify yourself before Pesach. But why do we do it before Shavuos and before Sukkot also? We also have to purify ourselves. There's only ten. There should be a lot of uh, these red they No, they lasted a long time. Every year we should have. No, they had lasted a very long time. Oh, it would last. But they didn't have power to do it before the Tzitzis and Shavuot. I mean, power was given only in Hashem. It says before Pesach, not before you see us in Okay. Lahav and Zem, to understand this, it's by another question. We say in the God of Amartim Zevach Pesach Hul Hashem. You should say that this is a card in Pesach, Asher Pesach, that Hashem jumped, passed over the seedling of Karbin Pesach. Lochayra Kosha, now we need to understand also, Lama Tzarech Lifseyach. It says the Jews put blood on the doorpost. And Hashem knew which doorpost to pass over. Pasach Hashem, that's what it says, right? So basically, they didn't have to put blood on the doorpost that Hashem shouldn't, shouldn't come into that house. So the Rebbe asks, Hashem knows everything. Hashem needs the Jew to put blood on the doorpost to, 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 put the, to jump over it. Hashem knows. So, what's the, so first of all, the Rebbe asks, What's this part of Adum? All the Medrash, the Medrash says, all these golos and you have to bring, go out of them and bring them to Mesha. And then he says, why is carbon parashas part of only before Pesach to purify the Jews? We should do it before every Yom Tif. And also, the Mavamatim Zavah Pesach, right, that Hashem jumped over. Why does Hashem need this sign to be able to jump over? Okay. Hello, Indian, who the Indian is like this. It says, Kul day di he needs a bomb, medalig ala orim. It says, this is the voice of my daddy, my friend. Yeah, it's in Shur Hashem, thank you. That he needs a bomb, medalig ala orim. Hashem jumps over the mountains, or mekabet salag voice, and jumps over the hills. Han ana daddy. So the daddy answers what the Medrash says. 
Vamali kumi lochreyasi. Yefasi ulachilach. Come to me, kumi loch. Get up, my friend, and you will have it. So he says like this. What does this mean? Shalosh Golim and Gimel Midas. The three Yom Tev and Pesach, Shavuos and Sukkot, correspond with Chesed, Gevorah, Tiferes. Just like we know, the three Yom Tev and correspond with Avram, Yitzchok, and Yaakov. And it's very clear because by Avram Avinu we find, when did the Malachim come to Avram Avinu? Pesach, it says in the Medrash. That's why Avram told Sarah, Lushi, need the dove, I see Ugais. Make a round matzah. Okay? Yitzchak has to do with mat and teda. Why? Because the, the, the shaifa of mat and teda was the left horn of the ram of Akedis Yitzchak. And Yaakov, it says, Allah, for his camels, he, from his family, for his cattle, he made sukkahs. So we see clearly there's a connection between Avram and Pesach, Yitzchak and Shavuos and Yaakov and, and Sukkot. But obviously it also refers to the three Sfiris, Chesed, Gvod, and Tevedas. So he says, Pesach, Ava, like it says in Shir Hashidim, Yishakein, Umin, Yishikas, Pi, Hashem, should kiss us with the kissing of his mouth. Pirush, what does that mean? Shekinesh, Yisrael, Eimer, HaKadosh Baruch, that the Yidin say to Hashem, the Medrash says, Yishakein, Kiss me, what does the Medrash say? The Jews say to Hashem, kiss me. What does kissing mean? That there's a close binding connection between us and you. Like the clinging of spirit to spirit. Like when a father loves his son, and he kisses him, because of the preciousness and the of the hearts. And what happens when you kiss? It's also air coming out, going to the to the mouth. So same thing it is by Hashem. the so the didn't say to Hashem, kiss me. What does that mean? Every single spark which exists in every single Jew. It has to be the clinging of the Jew to Hashem. How does the Jew cling to Hashem? But he, you know, there's nothing told down to there. It means, It means, when our thought connects to Hashem's thought, thinking Torah, speaking Torah, doing mitzvahs, right? So you have these three connections. That's the way a Jew connects to Hashem. The concept of Ava, love, means you become one with the person you love. We've discussed many times. Ask somebody in the street, what is the definition of love? You will never get a straight answer, a proper answer, what is love? Don't mind real love, not the meaning. Real love, what does love mean? So according to Taylor, it's easily understood. According to Taylor, the word Ava, Aleph, Hey, Beis, Hey, equals 13, which is the same gematria as the word Echad. Aleph, Ches, Dalet is 13, and Aleph, Hey, Beis, Hey is also 13. What is the concept of love, Chassidus explains, is you become one with the thing you love. You become one with it. So what's Pesach is Chesed, Avram, Ava? The Yidin are saying, we want to become one with you. When we think God's thoughts, and we speak God's state, and we do Hashem's mitzvahs, that's how we connect Hashem. That's how we become one. It's like a child tells their parents, I love you very much, but I will not listen to anything you tell me to do. By the way, what the father is telling the kid to do is for the kid's benefit. Not for the parents, but for the kids' benefit, yeah? But the kid says to the father, I will love you very much, but that's it. I'm not doing a thing for you. This is my life. Yeah. Well, you can't be in the family. Yes, you could. Yeah. Totally the the Pasuk says, <laughs> to cling to Hashem. How do you cling to Hashem? So the Gemara says, how could you cling to Hashem? Hashem is a consuming fire. 
No. That's not the way it works by Hashem. By Hashem, we do His things, we connect it. So He says like this. Um, they don't need 30 people to help him. He has a caretaker. Okay. Which is which is Hashem's action. The same thing by tzedakah. What shall we give and do? So therefore, what do we even say to Hashem and Pesach? Yishakenim and Yishikos Pihu. She kissed me, meaning become one with me. And he says, Af Shaguf Mabdul Maskes Soava. Even though Lucheira, this love comes from the Neshama. The body seemingly gets in the way of doing this Ava. Mahmas Daigas have panos because we worry about making a living and all the other things. So the Khaira, how do we connect to Hashem if the body gets in the way? He says, Ah Yadua Shain Yisrael El Nigolam El Bam Muna. There's a medrash that says the medrash says a lot of things. Yidn only get redeemed through tzedakah and a lot of different medrash. But one medrash says the Yidn only get redeemed through Amuna. By belief. What does that mean? Shabbat, what is the Amuna? What are we believing in? Shabbat Hashem is Baruch Yashmi That Hashem created the world something from nothing. Meaning, in essence, everything is Hashem. Derech Moshe. Ilu hoya odam yochel asiz davi yashmi If a person would be able to create yet something from nothing. Bevadei esi adava ye batul negadev. That, that thing would definitely be bottled in. If your whole existence, not in the human world, because we don't do that. If you save somebody's life, yeah, Mama saved the guy's life. If you think about it, he should be indebted to you for the rest of the life. People don't care. You do something bad, don't remember it, just they forget the day later. But in Indian, if your whole, if their whole existence is you, so they should be bottled to you. When a person realizes Hashem created Yashmiyai, and like we learned in Shaykh Damona, which means there's continuous creation. It's not like you build a table, you take a piece of existing wood, you change the form, and you have a table so you can build the table and go home. But like water in a dam, or you know, it has to be constantly there. You throw a ball up. As much power as you have in the ball, that's how much it's going to go up. And then it comes back down where it belongs. So if a person has a munah, that Hashem created the world yeshmiyayin, so then he understands it will be bottled to him. The same thing by Hashem. Nothing exists. Because in reality, what is, we learned this at a great length in Shaykh of Amunah. What is the existence of every object? Not only that, al Rebbe says, it's not like the neshama comes into the body and makes the body alive. Okay, so without the neshama, the body's dead. So even then, but the, the neshama doesn't create the body. It gives it life. Yet, the body therefore should realize, listen, without the neshama, I'm a dead hunk of meat. You know, so I need to... But here it's even more. It's not only that the neshama is like a battery that gives life to the body. The existence of the body is dependent on Hashem. It's much more than the, the, the chayis. Okay? Like when a person speaks a word, yeah? When you sleep, you don't... Well, Unless you talk in your sleep. But you don't definitely, you don't talk sense in, in your sleep. Vadiba, therefore, ain't a neshama atzma. The, the speech is not the neshama. Because you can stop talking, but you can't stop living. Elohu levushim tsoi, ubatal aisa diba, yet that diba that you spoke is bottled to the nefesh itself. Right? It's something that the nefesh does. Kar ba kolish bo, kmeish yekod bedvar Hashem shemayim nasu. 
Hashem made the world with this dibord, shedibord yehi ad. When Hashem said, let there be light, yehoyinasa ad. And therefore, what is the ad? Levush is a garment, eiter kasalma. He spreads out light like a garment. And in this world, through that dibor, Hashem gives existence to the higher world, lower world, Ganeid, Mailerim, all physical, spiritual universes. As far as Hashem is concerned, nothing exists. Afilu legabe madikame meaning even the gabi dibure, which is only the middle garment of Hashem, it's also nothing. The world is nothing. Not only can forget compared to Hashem. If this word of Hashem created the world, and that is the existence of the world, is the word of Hashem. That Hashem said yehi or yehi rokia, whatever it may be. Yeah. That, so the whole world is built on not only Tashem, not only Tashem's thought, but even Tashem's speech. And therefore it's called Nikra Beris Bar Bachola Teshabal Per Kutshibrihu. Not in Chumish, but how does Gemara call Hashem? A Kurdish Barhu. All over the Gemara. Kurdish Barhu. Why is Hashem called Kurdish Barhu? He said, Kurdish who moved them. The word Kurdish we learned. Who knows how many times means removed, separated. That's what the definition of the word kedusha. Hainu sevim kol almin ubeteich elamis einam luvish rabchinas dibur. And therefore, what does come into the world? What permeates the world? Speech. Yeah. And therefore, what and exactly what Alter Rebbe saying. That's Savior Kalam. What level of Hashem comes into the world? Malchus. That's Dibur. So Kaddish Baruch is even removed from the level of Dibur. But it's even more, what the Altar is saying is like this. Why is he called Kaddish Baruch? If you think about it, Kaddish and Baruch are two opposites. Kaddish means removed. Baruch means to bring down. So how can he be Kaddish Baruch Hu? Is he either removed or bringing down? So that's what Dr. Rebbe is explaining. It's both things together. Hashem is from one side removed from the world, and yet he does debor Vayayim Elakim that permeates the world to create the world in a way of Mamalukam in the direct functioning of the world. What? And this relation between us and Going to, it, rep, it represents the concept of a kiss. The concept of a kiss represents a closeness between one person and the next. And that's what they but this is all about peso, by the way. This is the level of Ava. What is the level of Ava? Jew becoming one with Hashem. Is that the connection of spirit to spirit? How is that done? To Machshava Dibra Maisa. Okay? And now the is explaining because the whole creation of the world, which comes from Dibur, so the whole world, therefore, by the way, world means physical universe and spiritual universe. Right? Because everything was created in the six days of creation. So that level is the way a Jew connects to Hashem. And therefore, by the way, it's an interesting point, a very fundamental point. If a person wants to dis, do this connection with Hashem, it got to be on his terms, not ours. Because he's the one that decides how we connect. It has to be on his terms, not on ours. Finite cannot, by definition, mathematically, finite cannot connect to infinite. They can't. They are more opposites, finite and infinite, is more opposite than fire and water. Because those two are limited creations. Here we're talking about finite and infinite, which is more... Okay. So how does a finite connect to the infinite? 
That's so, what I was saying. It's a jetty and a concrete block. That's what you were saying. And what he's saying is that when a Jew that Hashem says, I want you to think this, speak this, do this. When Hashem says, I want you to do this, A, B, C, think, speech, talk, but not the, your thought, speech, and action, my thought, speech, and action, then I am allowing you for the finite to become connected to the infinite. And that's what the Jews are saying. You show Kenyam in the Shikas Pew. Allow me to connect myself to you. So it's Hashem. Hashem is by telling us Mitzave. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means Tzave, connection, right? After Tzave. Mitzah means connection. But when Hashem says, I want you to do this, and the Jew does it, whether it's thought, speech, and action, totally irrelevant. The Jew is connecting to Hashem. But if it's in our terms, not what Hashem is deciding we should do, it's worthless. Mamish worthless. So if a Jew says, I don't need Torah mitzvahs to connect to Hashem, I will connect to eating, uh, connecting to Hashem by eating herring. I mean, it maybe tastes very good if you're Ashkenazic, not if you're Sephardic. But if you're Ashkenazic, I mean, it's one of the few things that I like about Ashkenazic. Because you're, you're I, love, I, love no, I don't mean it in a negative way. <laughs> All Svadim are really Mamzadim. They're half Ashkenazic. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality. So. That was a big statement. I don't, it's on tape. I don't mean Mamzer in a negative way. I mean, it's a combination. Of, because, like we said a million times, Hashem is a white male Ashkenazi. Yeah. So, they, they, you know, and, and what? There was Kenya. <laughs> This is a part of infinite. What? Finite is a part of infinite. Minimum. But or it's infinite, infinite is constituted by a lot of... Wrong. Infinite. Wrong. That's that contrary to math. You can never reach infinite by counting one, two, three, four, five. No, reaching no. But finite is a minimum part of infinite. No. No, because take away that part, then infinite is less. Infinite and there can't be. The it can't be. What are you talking to China? Just simple math. Simple math, I don't know. Finite knows that it's, it's distance from infinite. This is the marshal that we always use. No. Hashem, because Hashem is above both together, yeah. so therefore Hashem has the ability to tell us that by doing a finite action with a finite person, in a finite setting of time and place, because that's mitzvahs are only time. You can't bench lul of today. But spirituality is not quantifiable. Infinite means everything. No. I know what the word means. I know what you're talking about. No, but you cannot count spirituality. It's, it's yes, you could. You could count one mitzvah, two mitzvahs, three mitzvahs. You can count atzilas, bria, yitzira, asiya. Each one has ten levels. But that's the finite within spirituality. There is spirituality which is finite, there is spirituality which is infinite. Hashem's spirituality is above infinite and finite together. Of course, well, the mathematicians. Hakka China. All you want to know how to connect with that's all.